Shalom Aleichem, my dear friends. Hoping that everyone is well. Hopefully everyone is happy. And we are going to say a few words about this coming parasha of this coming Shabbat, Parashat Re'e. There are so many, so many mitzvot and so many thoughts that one could develop in this parasha. But how much can we say in a few minutes that we have? I tell you, my friends, there's nothing, nothing better than the study of our Torah. All you have to do is to ponder upon each and every verse. I would say each and every word. And to see there is so much wisdom to delve from it. So many good messages that one could bring into his heart. You don't do that, you're missing a lot. So much. I would like to talk about this. The Torah begins by saying, Re'e anochi noten lifnechem hayom beracha uklala. Re'e means see which means think. Anochi noten lifnechem. Hashem says, I am giving you before you today, hayom, which means as long as you live in this world. I'm giving you bracha, a blessing, uklala, and a curse. Oh, thank you very much. For bracha, I thank you. For a curse, and why do you, I mean, the parasha begins with that, as though, as though it is a title, as though it is a great revelation. Thank you very much. You're giving me a bracha, a blessing, and a curse. doesn't make sense. Is this how we declare things? There must be here something that is hidden. Well, let us try to see what's, what is hidden in, into it. First, let's see what the Torah continues and says. Eta beracha, you want to know what is the blessing? Asher tishme'u el mitzvot Hashem elokechem. The blessing is that you will be able to practice the commandments of God, your God. Thank you very much. We don't understand. This is the blessing that you mean? I thought that the blessing is, hey, you're going to make me rich, you're going to make me healthy, and, 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 uh, and so forth. And now you tell me that we know what is the blessing? Asher tishme'u. If you listen, of course I said if, because that's what comes to the mind uh, in the beginning. But that's not what the verse is saying. It doesn't say if you listen or if you observe to my commandments. It says, Eta beracha, the blessing, asher tishmeu, that you're, that you're getting by listening to the mitzvot, by, by doing, by observing the commandments. That requires more, uh, some kind of explanation, some kind of elucidation. When it comes to the curse, and the Torah keeps on explaining, and what is the curse? If you don't listen, if you don't observe the mitzvot, then you get a curse. So let's discuss first about the blessing, the curse. Who wants to be cursed? Besides, a curse could mean, let's say you, you transgress a commandment. And let's say the Shabbat, one desecrates Shabbat. The Torah says very openly, if you transgress Shabbat, you die. Oh yeah? I mean, I have seen so many people going on the bus on Shabbat, using the phone on Shabbat, opening television on Shabbat, nothing happens to them. Where is the mot yomat that the Torah says? 
that the punishment is death? No, that's not what the Torah means. You have to understand, even punishments, most of the punishments are not in this world. That's the reason why so many people do the wrong things and there is nothing bad happens to them. Sometimes when it happens, it's because there is a message there. Sometimes God gives them a message. You see, it's a warning. So be careful next time. So one should consider lucky if something goes wrong because of his own deeds. But the blessing, he doesn't have to tell me what is the blessing the Torah says. You're a Jew. You paid a lot for being a Jew. The, Jew, the Jewish people paid the most expensive price just because the Jewish people insist on remaining Jews. More than 2,000 years the Jewish people has suffered at the hands of the nations. There is not one nation that this not, did not disgrace us, did not, did not make us suffer. Apparently we should have been dead for a long time already. We should have we should have ceased to exist, but the Jew is very stubborn. The Torah says, Am keshe orif, the nation with a stiff neck. But this is, this is a blessing. Because of our natural stubbornness, Jews remained Jewish despite all the elements that were against it. That by itself, is giving us a tremendous credit. I have discussed this in, in previous times. But the Torah says, you want to know what is the real blessing? Observe my commandments. See how you feel. You will feel different. Because there is a curse if you don't. Now how come we did ask, a, uh, we wanted to ask a question, why when it comes to the blessing, of observing the mitzvot, it doesn't say if. It says the blessing is the fact that you are observing the mitzvot. The Jewish people should be very happy that we were given so many 613 commandments in the Torah plus another seven mitzvot of the sages. We should feel lucky. We should feel like kings. You know, 613 plus 7, that's 620. In Hebrew, 620 is the numerical value of the word keter, kaf, taf, resh. Kaf is 20, taf is 400, and resh is 200. Together it's 620. Which means, when a Jew keeps all the mitzvot of the Torah, then automatically there is a crown on his head. He is a king. Because many of the mitzvot require to overcome temptations. So you might think that I have to overcome my temptation. I want pleasures. You don't understand. If you pursue those pleasures, then you are a slave. A slave to your own inclinations a slave to your own temptations, a slave to the things that you do and after that you might even regret. That's a curse. It's a great curse. But you see, when you do the mitzvot, you feel so good. You feel that you are a king. That's keter. It's not corona. Corona is the curse, unfortunately. But corona is also a message. Something is not normal among the Jewish people. The Jewish people is responsible for the rest of the world. If the world exists, it's because there is a Jewish people. Unfortunately, the nations did not understand that. And they have tried so many generations to destroy us, to destroy our memory. But the memory of the Jewish people comes back again and again does not let them rest. Especially in this generation when we got back the land that we cherish, that God has given to us, the land of Israel. 
The world is astonished what's going on. We thought it's over after the Holocaust. We thought it's finished with the Jewish people. It's going to take a few months and then bye-bye. And suddenly they see a new rehabilitation, a new thing among the Jewish people. Not only they are still alive, but they are plenty crowned with success. And they are sending messages all over the world, saying that we are still here. Why? Because of those Jews that kept Judaism as it should be. But every Jew has kept the mitzvah, the, 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 the commandment of circumcision. That's a price that a Jew pays for being Jewish. Now you paid such a price, you were circumcised, and you grew up and you had bar mitzvah, and then you relinquished everything? Does not make a sense. What a curse it is. You deny your own Judaism when you have the stamp of Judaism in your body? That's Brit Milah, that's the circumcision? How can you do that? As I have discussed in previous uh, lectures, Shabbat, for example, that's another crown of the Jewish people. That's the real big crown of the Jewish people. That's the day in which every Jew, from the poorest to the richest, we feel that we are kings. The feeling of Shabbat begins even before the entrance of Shabbat. You already see it in the air. You already see it and feel it and smell it. How can a Jew forsake those beautiful things that we were given? And yet, he sees that Jews are still suffering. Corona has come. This virus came. And he attacked the Jews also, and the best of them. He attacked many observant Jews. Why is that? People are asking this question, and the answer could be, it's because our sages said, Israel arevim zebeze, the Jewish people is intermingled with one another. One, a Jew cannot escape responsibility for another Jew who does not keep the law. At some point, every Jew, if you really mind about the commandments, you have to check also if your neighbor does it. If not, with love and a happy face, you come and tell him secretly, why don't you keep Shabbat? I have tried to do it. In most cases, I did not succeed. But in some many cases, we did succeed. And those Jews today are so proud to be real Jews that they cannot even look back at the time when they did not keep the mitzvot. I know several of them. When I remind them of that past of them, just in, in the midst of a discussion, immediately you see the negative look that they give me. They don't want to be remembered. They are so proud of being now religious Jews. And even religious Jews today, they pay for whom? For themselves, for whatever mishaps they commit, or ever th for whatever things that they don't, much, they don't know much or they do not consider very much, such as fixing a character or something, or to learn more about kindness and things like this. But at least they do most of the things. They learn Torah. They observe Shabbat. So the Torah is a crown. The mitzvot are a crown of the Jewish people. Our sages said that in the Talmud in Masechet Shabbat on page 88. It says there that when the Jewish people received the Torah at the mountain of Sinai, and when they declared, yes, we shall observe, immediately two angels came upon every Jew and they put two crowns upon his head. Of course, it's symbolical. It is spiritual, but it means that to have the Torah, it's a crown that is unequal to any crown. A person who is totally immersed in Torah will not give up his life as it is for no life in the world. You could propose anything to him. 
He would look with disdain upon any other kind of life. And yet all he has is a little apartment in which with his books, and that's it. He has his books, he has his simcha, he has great happiness. Shabbat is a great crown, the crown of royalty. We have another crown, tefillin. I already discussed about those things, but those things must be repeated again and again. As the Mefarshim say, Torah, we have to study and review and repeat again and again. Anything that is repeated is possibly will become yours. But if you, you study something and then you forget it, it's not really yours. It remains the Torah of God, as it says in the first verse of the book of Psalms. King David said, Ashreha ish asher lo halach ba'atzat reshaim, uvderech hataim lo amad, uvmoshav letzim lo yashav. Ki im betorat Hashem hefzo, uvtorato yehge yomam valayla. Twice the word Torah appears there. The first time it says Torah Hashem, the Torah is from God. Hefzo means you desire to learn Torah. Many people desire to learn Torah, but they don't. So it remains Torah Hashem. The Torah remains in the hands of God. But it says immediately after, Torah When you immerse yourself into it, and you study day and night, and even if it is one hour, or a few moments here and there, but what you do there, it becomes, if you remember what you, what you study, and how do you remember? By repeating things. We have to repeat things. I might sound redundant many times in what I am saying, but it's so important to repeat, to emphasize again and again, especially to our friend, our brothers, Jews who do not keep Judaism as it should be. We love them. We want them to be together. And that's what's going to be one day. But in the meantime, they are killing themselves. Any mitzvah they do not fulfill, it's a loss that is for eternity. Our sages said, Mitzvah ba'aliyatcha, al tahmitzena, a mitzvah that comes to your hand, which means it's possible for you to do a certain commandment. It does not require any efforts. And it came to your hands and you did not do it? Al tahmitzena, do not lose it. The loss is extreme. Of course, we don't understand it much in this world. But in the world to come, and there is a world to come. You think we die and that's it? Bye-bye? Look at this beautiful body of everyone. So much wisdom, so much plan and purpose there is in every part of the human body. Or any creature. All you have to do is to ponder about anything. So you think this wisdom was given just like this for few years of life in this world, even though life in this world is extremely important because that's the only place in which we can invest after this world you get only what you got with you and the Talmud says how happy is the one who brings with him to the other world all the investment that he made in this world, in Torah and the observance of all the commandments. So that's, that's the point. Al tachmitzena. Do not skip doing that mitzvah. Any mitzvah, even the smallest mitzvah, such as washing your hands before you eat. You understand that a Jew who washes his hands before he goes to eat, and he says the blessing of the motzi before he eats, he is proving that he is a king that nothing is curbing him. He is the boss on himself. He does not give in to his temptations when he is uh, hungry, for example. Oh, he wants to throw himself at the bread uh, and go and eat the sandwich as delicious as it, as it is. But nevertheless, the Torah says, wait a minute, patience, wash your hands. Say the bracha al netilat yadayim. And then now sit down. Think about the great blessing that God gave us in giving us bread. 
and say, Baruch Atah Hashem, I'm what you like. No, you could, 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 could go ahead and eat. Of course you have to eat like a human being, not like a beast. But at the same time, you have proven that you're a king, which means you are the master of yourself. No temptation, no desire, no pleasure is taking over you. And you do it, then you can have all the pleasure you want. That's, a, that's royalty. And that's a little example, a small example. You put tefillin every day. You're a king. What's a, what's a tefillin? Tefillin is a, is, a, is a crown that you put on your head. But in the meantime, it means a lot because it conceals in it those verses that are so extreme in importance in the value of the Jewish people, such as Shema Israel. Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. It's a testimony that we carry with us. That's a crown of the most glorious nature. Of course you have to understand why we attach it to our arm. Why do we, do we place it on our head? Well, the arm means everything that we do. The actions of human beings. Remember, as the Torah says, Lo Bechayil. You see, nothing comes with your own power. You have power to do things. You are acting. It's because God gave you that possibility. There are people who cannot move, unfortunately. May God give them uh, healing. But you can move. Say thank you that you move. So everything that you do with your hands and your body goes as a symbol to be concealed in those little batim of the tefillin on your arm. And then you can put the head. You place it on your head. You see why first we do the, the, the tefillin on the arm and then we place it on the, on the rosh, on the head? Because there is an order there. First, say thank you and show yourself that you are a king over everything that you are capable of doing, which is exemplified by the tefillin of the, of the arm, your hands. And then, once you master yourself, then you know you could put a crown on, the, on your head. That's the tefillin shel rosh. It has to do also with what you have in mind. If you believe in what you do, if you love what you do, if you love the commandments of Hashem, then the Talmud says, Elu tfilin shebarosh. The Talmud is extraordinary. Every word there is with such minute detail must be measured and calculated. It doesn't say Elu tfilin shebarosh. We call the tfilin of the, of the rosh, of the head, tfilin shebarosh. But the Talmud says, Elu tefillin shebarosh. There is another tefillin inside your mind, your thoughts, your will. So you are practically investing so much in this world by being a Jew and by the fact that you do, you, you give the reason for being a Jew. And that goes only by keeping the mitzvot. That's why the Torah says, Et beracha asher tishmeu. There is no bigger blessing in this world than the fact that you are doing the mitzvot, that you understood that you are a Jew, that you understood what it means to be a Jew, that you understood the value of Shabbat, the great gift of Shabbat, the great gift of the mitzvot, of every single mitzvah, and above all of them, the great gift of Torah that we have received at the mountain of Sinai. It's worth it to be a Jew. But then, if you are Jewish, I haven't done anything that resembles Judaism, except your own circumcision, it's a pity. Pity, pity, pity. There is no greater pity than that. Indeed, we have to feel compassion for those Jews who do not, uh, who do not observe the Torah and the mitzvot. And we have to pray for them. We have to love them. And we have to pray for them. And the day will come when we will see them coming back. And having that pleasure that we, those who observe the Torah, do feel every time. Of course, in order to feel, you have to think. 
That's why the Torah says, Re'eh. does not mean to see with your eyes. There's nothing to see. It's to think, like it says in Pirkei Avot, Histakel bishlosha devarim. Ve'en ataba avera. That's, uh, who was there who, who said that? Akavi aben ma'al al-el. In the book of Pirkei, the book of the fathers, he said, Histakel, ponder, look, with the eyes of your intelligence, of your brain, look upon three things. I'm not going to go into it. This requires a lecture. And you will not sin, just by thinking. Many times, if you, if you are going to commit a sin and you think before, there, is, there are great chances that you will not commit the sin. But if you do everything without thinking, then you are lost. Then it's a pity. So the Torah says, Bracha, the bracha, the, the, the blessing of the Jew, is the fact that he was given all the mitzvot. Asher tishu tishmeu el mitzvot Hashem elokechem. Ve'akelala, and the curse, im lo tishmeu. It's up to you. If you don't observe, then don't blame God. God does not bring any curse. Ki me'ashem lo yetze hara'ot ve'atov, it says in the book of Echa, from God there is nothing evil that comes. If there is any evil, or any misery, check your deeds. Maybe something is missing in your life. If you think, I am here, I am alive, God says. And I am giving you today. Today means this world. A blessing and a curse. So it is a declaration of love, even though it has to do with a curse. But the curse doesn't come from him. It is depending entirely in you. And that's what the next verse says. The, the curse will come only if you don't listen. Otherwise, there is no curse. Of course, there is much to discuss about what happens in the world, even when we don't deserve it and so forth. But you have to understand, our problem is that we are one people like one person. And every Jew should feel that he is, he is related to every other Jew. Therefore, at least one should feel some kind of responsibility. As I said in the past, when the Chazon Ish Alav Shalom in Bnei Brak went out on Shabbat walking and taking a walk with his students, and suddenly he came to the proximity of the city of Bnei Brak, it was Shabbat, and he saw many cars running, and he sighed. And the, 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 the disciple said to him, Rabbi, what's the problem? Why? Is it? He said, I'm, I'm sorry that there is so much desecration of Shabbat by Jews. So they said to him, of course, we know that. He said, no, no, you did not understand. I'm sorry for us. We are religious Jews. The fact that there is another Jew who is not observing, it's our fault. That means we have to check our deeds. The religious people, the Haredi, should check in his own deeds. Why is it that so many Jews do not keep mitzvot? Let one not make a mistake. There is responsibility upon each one of us. There is a reason. That's the reason why Corona came and attacked everyone, regardless of what he does. Even big rabbis were unfortunately uh, they, 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 uh, suffered also from it and died. Why? Because every Jew should think that he is responsible for another Jew. But how can we remedy to this situation? We can remedy to this situation with one word. Ahava, love. If there was love projected by every observant Jew, even to the non-observant Jew, if the non-observant Jew would feel that the other Jew loves him, you have to understand, love has a tremendous, there is a, there is a philosophy known even by the non-Jews, that love transmits itself from one heart to another. If you love someone, you could be sure that he loves you also, even without knowing you. Why? Because that's the power of love. If the non-observant felt that they were beloved by the those observant Jews, 
I believe, and it is a personal belief, that I believe all my life that that is the remedy, then that's, sal that's, that's the salvation. And that's how redemption will come. Why do you think the Mashiach has to come? Why do you think that Eliyahu and Nabi has to come before? To make sure that there is love. Then we can talk. Then we can work together. Otherwise, a Jew cannot be by himself. Many observant Jews make that mistake, thinking that non-observant, it's not our business. No. If you cannot do much actively, then at least try to understand them, their background, their problems, and also try to see some kind of zechut, some kind of merit in what they do. Then there are many kinds of merits. Perhaps we don't even have those merits. We never know. Love conquers everyone. Shabbat Shalom, my friends.